Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Levy. This is Guitar Tips, my weekly video blog series. I post a new tip here each and every Friday. You can hit the big red subscribe button down below there and then you will just be you'll be in the sweet spot that's where you'll be um so you may notice if you're a regular uh watcher a subscriber that i'm in a different room than i usually am in uh <laughs> this is a whisper room a uh, more or less soundproof room uh, here at the Los Angeles College of Music, where I am the chair of the guitar department. And uh, I have a little break in my schedule today, so I thought I would record uh, this week's tip here at the school and give a shout out to my school, uh, Los Angeles College of Music in sunny Pasadena. Um, drop on by sometime. Uh, this week's guitar tip is, this week's guitar tip is, you ready? Um, practice in circles. Practice in circles. Now, uh, this has a couple of different meanings, as, as you'll see, and uh, hopefully this will make sense to you. The first thing you need to know before we get any further is we're going to talk about two different circles here. Uh, I'm talking generally about the circle of fourths. We've, I think we've looked at that here before in uh, the uh, mapping the fingerboard episode and maybe elsewhere. Uh, but we're going to use it a little bit differently uh, here in, in this episode, which is called Practice in Circles. So there's two circles we're going to use. The circle of, and they're both uh, types of circles of fourths. One is the chromatic circle of fourths, and that starts, uh, you can start it on any note, but we'll start on C. And when we go up a fourth, or if you're thinking about a clock with 12 uh, pitched points on it, um, C will be noon, and as we go clockwise to one o'clock and two o'clock, F will be at one o'clock, B flat will be at 10 o'clock, E flat will be at three o'clock, and etc. A flat, D flat, G flat, or F sharp, that's down at six o'clock. And then coming back up uh, after that, you'd have B, E, A, D, G, and then back to C again. So that's the chromatic circle of fourths starting on C. Uh, you should learn to be able, you should learn the cycle so that you can do it starting on any note. But C is a convenient place to start because it's, uh, it's neutral. It has no sharps, no flats. Uh, it just is what it is, okay? So that's one type of circle, and we can use that um, to practice voice leading. We can do it with triads. There's, uh, there's stuff going on in the hallway out here. Uh, one way you could use it is to get to know your different triad inversions on one particular string set. So if we start here, that's a first inversion C chord. I'm playing E, G, C. And we want to voice lead to the, to the nearest F triad. F, because we're, we're going to go around the circle now. So C, F, and then B flat, and then E flat, and then A flat, D flat, G flat, or sometimes called F sharp, B, E, A, and so on. And you could do this on any string set. Uh, here's, let's see, you could start here. This is first string set, uh, the high three strings. I'm starting on G just because that's where my fingers fell. So we go G, C, F, B flat. Now you notice that B flat is the same shape as the G. So there's only three shapes, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. You could certainly do this with other triad types. There's minor, F minor, B flat minor, E flat minor, A flat minor, D flat minor, or C sharp minor, F sharp minor, B minor, E minor, and, and 
and so on. And there's other string sets and other inversions and other triad types. So that's a really good way to get to visualize more of the neck, maybe fill in some of the holes between, you know, areas of the neck that you are comfortable in and maybe areas of the neck that you're not so comfortable in. This could be one way to connect all those dots. Um, you could also do this with four-part chords. Interestingly, uh, oh, sorry, one last thing about triads. There's a neat little triad exercise that one of my teachers uh, taught me when I was at Dick Grove. This is a, an exercise from Peter Butterfield. If you start on, say, A, and then you you move the, the fifth of A up to the flat seven, so it turns it into an A7 chord, and then we go to D, and then the fifth of D, that's this A, goes to the flat seven, that's C, and it becomes D7, then we have G, and again, the fifth goes up to the flat seven, so D goes up to F, G, C, C7, F, B flat, B flat seven, E flat, a flat, A flat seven, D flat, and etc. This guitar is just a 12 fret guitar, so I'm going to run out of uh, neck pretty quickly here. But you get the idea. You could start on a different shape. This is F, B flat, E flat, A flat. Uh, it takes a little bit of strength and dexterity to do that, but it also builds a little bit of strength and dexterity to uh, to try doing that and. So you might want to work on that. But the next thing I was going to say is that triads tend to move up the neck. If your voice leading to the nearest possible um, triad around the circle. Um, but if you use four part shapes, like for example, this is F major seven. If we voice lead to the nearest possible B flat major seven, that's going to find us moving down the neck and then E flat and then A flat and then D flat. And if you're not sure about voice leading, how to do it. Basically, if we start on F major 7 and, and look at these notes, um, this is F, C, E, A, okay? Then you need to know what are the notes of B flat major 7, and those are B flat, D, F, A. And if you weren't sure about that, you'd use the B flat major scale, and you'd use the 1, 3, 5, and 7 of that scale, and that's going to give you the spelling of B flat major 7. And then what you would do to get from here to here is you would look at the different possibilities. We're on F now, and so uh, there's an F in the B flat major 7 chord. We might as well, F could go to F. The C could in the F chord could go down to B flat. The E in the F chord could go down to D. That's the third of the B flat chord. And the A in the, in the, in the F major 7 chord can stay put. So really, two notes change. And two notes stay the same. That's pretty good voice leading. If we went up to the next B flat major 7, it's almost impossible to play without harmonics here. But if you did the math, you'd see that there's actually more motion going on. Um, uh, so A would go up to B flat, E would go up to F, C would go up to D, and uh, F would go up to A. If you just add up all those half steps that are changing, F goes up to A, C goes up to D, you'd add up the number of half steps total and compare that to the number of total half steps changed here, and you'd see that this is a smaller total number, so they're therefore better voice leading. So we continue down the neck like that, A flat, D flat, G flat, uh, B, E, right? So I'm just alternating shapes there, and that's going to find us going down the neck, A, D, G, C, F, B flat. And again, you could do this on other string sets. You could do it with other chord types. You could do it with, uh, you know, two not very well voice led chords, but alternating. This is something that Ted Green talks about in his book, uh, Modern Chord Progressions. You could go C, that's one type of voicing here, and then F, that's a different type of voicing. This is root seven, three, five. This is five, three, seven, just alternate 
that's F, C, F, B, uh, let's see, C, <laughs> F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. And that's great. Now you were actually studying two different shapes. Okay. So that's a lot of stuff that you can do with the uh, chromatic circle of fourths. Now, the other circle I wanted to talk about, and I know I'm, I'm already being pretty long-winded here. I'll try and get to the uh, get through this bit a little bit faster. Um, the diatonic circle of fourths, okay? So that would be C major 7. Well, if we just go with triads, we'll just start with triads. C, F, B diminished, E minor, A minor, D minor, G, C. Again, C, F, B diminished, E minor, A minor, D minor, G, and C. If we do it with uh, four-part harmony, that's C major 7, C major, C major 7, F major 7, B half diminished, E minor 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, G7, and C major 7. Not very good voice leading there, I was just taking one kind of grip and moving it around and changing it. Uh, if you want to do a better voice led version, that could be C major 7, it's a second inversion with G on the bottom, C, F, diminished or B minor 7 flat 5, E minor 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, G 7, C major 7, F major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, E minor 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, we ran out of neck there, G7, C, F, B, E, and it goes on like that. Um, That can be really useful, especially if you're interested in jazz. A lot of chord progressions move that way, and there's a lot of different combinations of different chord qualities that you get under your fingers that way. Um, now, in Ted Green's book, Modern Chord Progressions, in the chapter where he talks about that kind of harmony, uh, one thing that he doesn't get into is open strings. And that's another thing, I know we talked about open strings a few episodes ago, but that's something that you could do, um, I love it when tips, this is kind of a mashup of different uh, concepts. So we could go around the circle, but try and use open strings. So I'll go back to triads for a second, C, and then F, but I'll use this open G just because it's kind of a nice sound. And then B diminished, um, I hate to do this because we're, we're missing the opportunity of uh, open strings here. We've actually got two of them. Well, you'll have to think. I'll have to think about that. I guess that's we've got doubled notes, but maybe that's a, that's not so bad. This could be a possibility. D F B, right? Uh, and then E minor. Uh, you could do like uh, let's see this maybe. Uh, but kind of neat, G, E, and B that way, or you could do that way, probably easier. And then A minor, I'm just trying to grab an open string where I can, and here it's not really part of the chord, but it's a nice color. D minor could be like uh, this, excuse me, that's D, A, F, and then G, voicing D, B, G, and when we get back to C, again, you could look for some kind of outside note that's putting the major 7 using open B, F. Anyway, there, there's not really a science to it, but what I would want you to do is just try and use an open string where you can as you go around the circle, thinking mostly triadic, but you know, adding another note if it sounds good to your ear. Um, so uh, that's something that I've been working on, uh, just starting to get into. That's why I'm still kind of searching. But I always like being in that place where I have something to practice that's very clear and finite and something that's 
more of an open uh, question and and needs some discovery and uh, exploration. I happened to stumble across this E flat chord while I was messing around with that exercise, which I'd never really considered before. This is B flat, open G, and uh, E flat here. Really sweet sound on the guitar. I'd never been there before. This is A flat major seven, uh, D flat, sort of Lydian, G flat, sort of uh, with a four in it, uh, B major seven, um, E major seven, A major nine, D major seven, six, you know, be creative, be colorful. Uh, this is a plenty long tip and probably I should have wrapped up about four minutes ago. But you get the idea. Practice in circles. Use the chromatic circle of fourths, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, etc. And use the diatonic circle of fourths, C major, F major, B diminished, E minor, A minor, D minor, G, C. Or in four part harmony, C major 7, F major 7, uh, B half diminished, E minor 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, G7, C. Excuse me. Um, and just get to know the guitar, what you're going to do with that stuff. I hope you'll think of something that I can't even think of here to say, so I'll just leave it blank. But I stand by it as a valuable use of time uh, in just getting to know the layout of the guitar and the basics of harmony as pertaining to this playing field here. So thanks a lot. Um, I appreciate you tuning in and sharing this if you feel like doing that. Uh, for Guitar Tips, my name is Adam Levy. Until next time, stay tuned and take good care.